Hi, my name is Sebastian Mefra. I'm a researcher and lecturer here at the University of Tasmania. My main field of research are the tectonic history of this region, including uh, Southeast Australia, Southwest Pacific and Southeast Asia. In this talk, I'm mostly going to be talking about the Lachlan origin, but also looking at the Delamerian origin and the Tyanan uh, origins, including the rocks that form the deep crust beneath my feet. The Lachlan origin has a very long and complicated history, beginning with Neoproterozoic rifting, Cambrian subduction and orogenesis, Ordovician subduction and or orogenesis, and then uh, potentially more subduction and orogenesis in the Devonian. Um, at least three tectonic cycles uh, form the uh, Lachlan origin. Uh, these tectonic cycles were driven, of course, by plate tectonic processes. This broad tectonic framework that I've just outlined is very well known, but much uncertainty remains about the location and geometry of plate boundaries at the different times. These um, details about the geometry and the locations are very important to be able to make predictions about where you might find ore deposits or uh, to be able to really constrain the local geology in each of the different areas. The constraints come from both our knowledge of the tectonic processes, processes like rifting and subduction, a collision and um, what's happening in the mantle down beneath the continents and the crust, but also data from the local rocks like timing and structure uh, and the tectonic settings we can derive from igneous rocks, from sedimentary rocks, including the provenance of the sedimentary rocks and from the timing and type of metamorphism that these rocks have undergone. Let's review really quickly the uh, convergent margin processes that may have operated in the Lachlan origin. Well, our best at modern analog for these tectonic processes is what's happened in the Southwest Pacific in the last 45 million years. The last 45 million years are in some ways easier to reconstruct than when we're trying to go all the way back to the Cambrian where a lot more things have happened over geological time. So, if we look at the modern plate tectonic setting and uh, processes, we see in the Southwest Pacific that from 45 million year onwards, there was a series of uh, west dipping subduction segments uh, stretching all the way from New Zealand through to New Guinea and northwards, and uh, that these um, West dipping subduction systems, some of them have undergone arc reversal. These arc reversal processes flip the arc back to an east dipping subduction system and the arcs have a tendency to roll back towards the continent. The New Hebrides and Solomons arcs are currently east dipping systems that are rolling back towards the continent and are starting to collide with various continental fragments. These undergo, that undergo collision. Following collision, we can uh, guess that what will happen is the subduction uh, will lock up and we will probably initiate a new subduction system. Uh, in many cases, we may uh, initiate a west dipping subduction system again, and then the cycle ends again where the arc uh, roll back into the Pacific, collide with something and come back again. Um, in these systems, multiple subduction zones operate at the same time and the arcs can build on one another. And most of these arcs contain some continental material, whether it's sedimentary material or continental blocks. These type of processes have built the margin eastward. 
let's use these modern Southwest Pacific tectonic processes to reconstruct the Lachlan origin history uh, shown on this slide. Well, I guess we should start with the Neoparasoic and Cambrian Rift. And we know very well uh, that we have um, some sort of passive margin uh, developed over a long period of time, from the starting at 700 and with a number of rift events. These um, were uh, outlined in um, this uh, recent publication from Jack Mulder, um, showing the Tasmanian um, uh, events and rifting um, ending at uh, around uh, 580. What happens between uh, this sort of 580 period and the start of the Cambrian convergent magmatism is still very poorly known. We know almost nothing about the events from 580 to 520. And this is an area that um, we need a lot more research on. However, somewhere between 520 and 510 million years ago in the Cambrian, we see a whole lot of uh, Cambrian arcs developed. And these are shown in the arrows on this diagram from uh, one of my students, Tom Sharp. And um, we these um, Cambrian arcs show that we then have convergent margin tectonics uh, starting up in that 520 to 510 MA period. I would argue that in um, the Lachlan origin, we had at least two Cambrian subduction zones, a continental uh, subduction zones above a west dipping slab um, all along the margin from the Staveleys in Western Victoria, all the way out to Western New South Wales near Broken Hill. In, um, the eastern part of the Lachlan and in Victoria and Tasmania, we see evidence of Cambrian island arcs. These Cambrian island arcs were uh, almost certainly created offshore above an east dipping uh, subduction zones, although they may have had a west dipping component earlier. But uh, as I said earlier, we do not know very much about the start of these subduction systems. Um, we see that these, uh, these east dipping subduction systems uh, collide with Tasmania, forming high pressure, low temperature metamorphic complexes and eclogites in the central parts of Tasmania, um, places like the Collingwood River metamorphic complex and the other com metamorphic complexes in Tasmania. In Victoria, we see much less evidence of metamorphism and continental crust, suggesting that the crust was much thinner. And in New South Wales, we see very little evidence for a Cambrian metamorphism, suggesting that maybe that Cambrian island arc did not collide with anything stalled in this position here. We do have some Cambrian uh, eclogites in the Peel Fault um, on the edge of the New England origin. It's possible that the scenario we're looking at in New South Wales is a scenario where the Nyland Arc collides in Tasmania, but a remnant arc in an oceanic setting remains in um, New South Wales. In the same way as uh, in the Solomon's Vanuatu arc, the Solomon's arc collided with, with the Ongtong Trava plateau, but the Vanuatu uh, New Hebrides segment of the arc did not collide with anything and left a remnant arc in the ocean, so Vitya's arc. And so potentially the New South Wales um, segment is analogous to this. All right, so what does this New South Wales segment look like? It's very rapidly evolving as people are finding new Cambrian rocks throughout Eastern Lachlan. And we see evidence for Cambrian diorites and gabbros um, in the southern part of this area. And then in the northern part, we see evidence for zirc inherited zircons 
that are Cambrian in age that have these characteristic hafniomycetopes that suggest that they are part of this Cambrian island arc system. Um, looking in more detail at those hafniomycetopes and looking at the evidence for having two separate uh, subduction zones, um, if we look at the uh, most of the um, zircons in the Macquarie Arc and the Cambrian zircons in New South Wales, we see that they have hafniomycetopes that suggest that they're derived from the mantle in an oceanic type setting. While when we look at the arc that we see in the Staveleys uh, in Western Victoria, we see that these have components derived from the crust. So um, by looking at, in detail at the geology, um, we can constrain um, uh, the tectonics. And these tectonics suggest that there's two subduction zones, that these subduction zones interact with Tasmania and Victoria, that the Tasmanian rocks are not quite the same as the Victorian rocks. And um, I would say that there is no way that the available uh, rocks support a purely west dipping system as shown in this 2018 reconstruction by Ross Cayley. And I would uh, say that the evidence that I've reviewed uh, over the last uh, five years or so uh, shows that we probably had both an east and a west dipping system. So um, following uh, the demise of the Cambrian system, uh, we see the start of the Macquarie Arc. The new data from New South Wales show very much that the Macquarie Arc was built on uh, remnants of, of the Cambrian Arcs. Um, it was active throughout the Ordovician. There are some debate about whether it was truly an arc and uh, the rocks really look arc-like. Is it truly oceanic? Well, it may have had some continental elements, particularly in the uh, provenance of some of the sedimentary rocks, because we know that probably interacted with um, continental crust through this Cambrian orogenic uh, events that I've just described earlier. It was active throughout the Ordovician and it finished at the end of the Ordovician and in the early Silurian. This tectonic scenario that I support um, has an arc reversal somewhere in, at around 455 million years in the uh, earliest late Ordovician, uh, where we have this long-lived uh, arc above a west dipping subduction system reverse and come back into the margin to cause the Benambra orogeny at the end of the Ordovician and in the early Silurian. There are other models out there that have this um, orogeny caused by purely a retreat and compression of the system during that time without having a full arc reversal. I would argue that we do need an arc reversal to really bring that system back into the market. In the Silurian and Devonian period, uh, an excellent model was proposed by Ross Cayley to explain the structure of the origin. And I, uh, all the data that I've reviewed so far suggest uh, that this model explains very well what's happening through that Silurian and Devonian period. Uh, one part of the model where I am a little bit more equivocal about is about the Dundas Fossi orocline, which uh, tries to describe the bending of the Dundas Trough and some of the uh, rocks in Western Tasmania over themselves through that Silurian and uh, Devonian period. 
And I would say that there is a little bit of evidence for rotation of some of the blocks in central Tasmania relative to those in western Tasmania, but that the model proposed by Ross Cayley uh, doesn't really uh, explain all of the rocks and the scenario is very difficult to make uh, work in tectonic reconstructions. My student Thomas Sharp had a go at this and basically it doesn't work geometrically. In the title of this talk, I, I had implications for exploration. And at the moment, uh, these uh, implications are being uh, worked out and published by three of my PhD students. And um, I am not going to actually talk about them in great detail beyond saying that we will get to a stage where we will be able to make detailed predictions as we start to get more and more constraints on the tectonics, but uh, that we need these software tools to be able to really um, start to work out how these individual blocks and individual subduction systems evolve to make the Lachlan origin. In conclusion, I'd like to thank my linkage uh, partners who funded this research over the last five years.